uh, I don't think uh, she needs an extensive introduction, um, but we, we do have our district governor, Joe Crenshaw, with us today. She's going to talk to us a little bit about what we have going on with our club and talk about the district. So welcome, Joe. Thank you, Bryce. My first, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let me first of all say thank you for having me over today. Um, <clears throat> we've been trying to make sure that we get to the clubs and I had you on my list, but I kept thinking, I have been to Forest Grove already. And someone says, no, you haven't been to Forest Grove already. You've been to Forest Grove Daybreak. Oh, I forgot. The Forest Grove is the clubs that have one and two and maybe three instances where we have Forest Grove in our listings, but we never clarify them sometimes. But I just wanted to, talk, to say to you today, thank you for having me and thank you for all of the things that you're doing in your communities. <clears throat> It is really fun now that we are getting to a part of our, our, our club visits that I can sort of see the end. Uh, we've been on this trek since July. I have been uh, to the east out in Pendleton and Hermiston. I've been to the south all the way down to um, uh, the, the Salem clubs. I've been uh, out to the coast and I'm coming back this way again. And pretty soon I'll be at my home club, which is supposed to be the end of the club visit. But we know that we did this all by way of Zoom and we don't normally do Zoom. Actually, I don't have a playbook. I'm just doing this from whatever we think that will work. And it's been really pleasant to get out, talk to the club members, even though I don't see them I am just now uh, attending some club meetings that are doing things a little bit different. They have uh, uh, the outside, they may have about seven or eight folk outside, and then they have some inside. A lot of the groups do not want to be inside close to one another. So it's been an interesting occasion. But I, I think I need to let you know a little bit about who I am, your district governor for the year 2000. 2021. When I started my, my journey back about three and a half years ago, I was looking so looking forward to getting in my car and tra traveling to the different towns and visiting the different clubs and being able to enjoy the fellowship that we normally see and do at uh, district governor's visits. It didn't happen that way. Our Rotary president, Holga, indicated at the beginning of the year that we were going to have our, our theme is going to be Rotary Opens Opportunities. Now, I'm not sure whether he had a, an insight on the, what was happening around the world, but it surely is opening opportunities for us. You know, I listened to you as you're talking about meeting clubs by way of uh, Zoom, and that's other clubs all over the country and uh, internationally and getting a chance to meet other people that we would never have thought about if we were meeting one-on-one. -on -one. We'd come to our meetings and we'd sit down and enjoy the camaraderie. We'd eat, we'd have our, our, our personal things going on here locally, but we never even thought that we would be able to do this. Well, nowadays, opens opportunities for me means that we've been able to share what we do in Rotary with other folk in our communities and around the world. I came from a family, a large family of 16, and I'm number 13. And we were raised in the South, a poor family. My mother and father were sharecroppers and they worked their farms, not necessarily as Rotarian. I don't think my mother even knew what a Rotarian was. And I didn't either until <clears throat> I had moved to Chicago. <laughs> After the death of my mom and I was living in Chicago and I passed by the Rotary International Headquarters in Evanston. We were living right up the street from them. And I asked someone what was Rotary. They said, oh, one of those clubs where they have 
old white men go in and drink coffee and have different things going on with them. You don't want to really know about it. So, okay, drop that. I moved to California and I was married. And I joined uh, United Airlines and I was there for about 13 years. And after the death of my husband, I moved north to Oregon. And when I came to Oregon, I left my job at United Airlines and decided that I wanted to do something different. So I joined McDonald's. I bought a couple of restaurants and then I was asked one day by one of the gentlemen in the area who happened to be an older white guy if I wanted to join Rotary. Well, I kept thinking in the back of my head that what I was told is that, you know, Rotary is not for you. It's for older white men. Oh, okay. I was living in Oregon City and it was really a time when uh, I bought a restaurant and in Oregon City, and if I, I, I assumed everything was for everybody. So I went to the meeting in Oregon City and I was told that you know, this is where the, the movers and the shakers are. This is where all of the folk that are, are somebody is in this club. When I first joined, it was absolutely, they were so welcoming. And I said, okay, I like this. I get to know everybody here. I'm brand new in the community. I have a restaurant. I need people to come to buy the food so that I can stay in business. Well, that was my main reason for joining. And then we got, the, we were doing projects. I love international. So we were doing projects and I got invited to go on a group study exchange to South Africa. 21 days, I was out in Africa and I learned what Rotary was really all about. It was just at the time when we were talking about the AIDS crisis, just the end of the AIDS crisis. And the things that Rotary was doing in Africa was absolutely monumental. They were taking young kids who had uh, no family and moved them into uh, homes where they had house mothers, people who had homes, had their children at their own home, but they came in during the daytime to help to, 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 to service the young kids there. They became their mothers and their fathers. No money was asked. People from the neighborhood and the communities bought food in, helping to serve. They helped to school the young kids. And uh, we just visited different towns and there was different things going on. Clothing, education, a guy had a winery and all the sales from his winery went to the community that was around him. And I thought that that's what I really wanted to do. So I started out in Rotary thinking that Rotary was going to help me to grow my business. And then <laughs> it became really apparent that it was going to help me in more ways than that. It helped me to understand that life is more like giving rather than receiving. We get so much more when we receive, when we give, than what we decide that we're going to get from other people. It has been really a journey for me. So right now, you know, what I'm trying to do is move forward. And by becoming the district governor, I thought that I would have something to give to the community. Something that probably you haven't heard before because I don't think that I picked a pattern from anyone else. I'm making this as I go, making this up as I go because this year was not to be. It wasn't supposed to be this way, but we are almost at, a, at the end of the journey, visiting the clubs. Then I'll go back and I'll come back to your club again, because I really want to come back and enjoy the camaraderie one-on-one. -on -one. Terry and I have worked together about three to four years. I was his AG. And when I left his, his space, Janine took over after me so there are a lot of different memories. Claudia and her husband and I have been working together to try to formulate some ways that we could get Rotary out and do some different things. So our playbook is a little different than what you've seen.
So what I come to the club to try to tell you is what we are planning to do this year in the district. And there's some of the things that are continuing from the last year. We have and we get together in October to try to plan out our strategic plan. And most of you all do that anyway. You want a, a sort of a journey. Where are you gonna go for next year? How many people do you want in your club? How many new clubs are you gonna have? What about your Rotaract club? How are you gonna get that together? But you plan this. It's not something that you jump right into. So in October of last year, we planned that what we wanted to do was to grow Rotary. We wanted to increase our effectiveness in the foundation. We also wanted to train our presidents, our leaders, utilizing the district training assembly, pets, and uh, pre-pets. Now, all those things are, are changing in the way that we present them but we still are gonna do that. We wanted to grow and strengthen our clubs. We wanna add additional people. And I look at, and I hear you're talking about adding new members. So you're doing the things that we said that we were going to do. We wanna promote membership diversity. You're doing that. You have your diversity, equity, and inclusion group together to try to determine how you might be able to fundle and, and, and move to get more people into your club. We wanted to create new ways to serve Rotary. You're doing that too, by some of the things that you're doing in your community. You know, selling steaks. I can't wait to get mine. You're gonna be doing those uh, reads. All of those things help to bring out what Rotary is all about in your community. And we're supporting innovations. How many of you thought that Zoom was something on a racetrack until we got to doing Zoom every week? Now you're probably saying, let's get out of here and let's get out into our communities and do something different. But it is a venue that we are utilizing to be able to reach all of our members. And that is really what saved us during this year because I don't know what would have happened if we had said Rotarians, you can't meet, you can't talk, you can't do any of those things. And you know how we are as Rotarians, we wanna talk. Sometimes they say we talk too much, but we really wanna be sociable and that's part of who we are, that's our makeup. And so what we're doing is to try to indicate that we can do this, we can get Zoom, we can utilize different avenues of communicating with one another. So I'm going to stop for a moment, Julia, and ask if you could ask a couple of your members. I don't care what, how, how long they've been in Rotary or whatever, but a couple of your members, why did they join Rotary? And why did they stay? Why are they still in Rotary? And what does it give to them? Just, just to let us hear. All right. Lauren Waltz, would you please uh, answer Joe? Mute. Lauren, you're muted. Okay. There. Perfect. There you go. Okay. I'll say again. Hello, Joe. Hi, Lauren. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I, I'm great. Um, well, uh, this uh, I'm. I'm call, I'm here in in uh, Lake Oswego. Okay. So you know where that is. Sure. And you would say, well, why am I in Lake Oswego, and why am I on this? Why am I a member? Well, I I moved here about the time of this pandemic started, and we went around to some. Well, just prior to that, we visited some alternative churches and different things. Uh, not, I have to say I haven't visited other Rotary clubs. I've been recommended by Janine that I do that because she's got a lot of good, a lot of good clubs. And um, but the, the Zoom thing, um, I thought, well, I'll try, try just it. maintaining this connection because I was I've lived in Forest Grove since 1946, 
Mm-hmm. And, I, and that's a few years ago. And so that's, I, I feel like I'm part of the community and Rotary is a big, as you can, as you know, Rotary is, uh, and the Force Grove Rotary is, was the club, okay? And I uh, appreciate uh, the relationship and the friendship and the fact that, that, that it's all about relationships and community. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have uh, we got a heck of a start. Uh, nothing's been said about our Concord Elegance. You probably know about it. Yes. Uh, okay. And that's our that's our big fundraiser. And aren't too many uh, aren't too many members that uh, you know. I'm just about the oldest uh, remaining. Uh, other than well, let's see. Bob Nixon resigned, didn't he? So uh, so I I've got a I've got a challenge to stay uh, stay around for a couple couple more years. <laughs> but anyway. Um, uh, I'm rambling, and I've probably forgotten what all your question was. But I joined because, first of all, I was well. I was brought into Rotary by Bob Nixon, and uh, I was real pleased because my 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 father, whose business I got involved with, uh, was always under the impression, you know, one one insurance agent in a community is uh, you, you got to go down the road. So. Uh, that's the old classification system, and and so I picked up on that. And he he so he went he became a lion, but I want to be a Rotarian, and so I was glad to come into into Rotary with uh, with Bob Nixon's sponsorship. Um, but it's a long long journey, and for what forty six seven years of Concord, I was a president of the club when that uh, that year that year got started uh, um, and I can go on and on and on because I've got a lot of things to say but you, if you want to want to hear from an old guy my hair is getting gray and uh, but I'm definitely getting older every year but I don't really feel that way anyway so uh, yeah no no women did not women <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's been 15 times better since we've added women I know that would be good. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Lauren. And, and, and it stands to reason that you go back home. You come in on your club from home. Now, Liga Suiga meets on Mondays. But you oh, and here. So I, I can go to there, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was just making that statement because we, we tend to stay where the fellowship is and where we are comfortable. And uh, I've been a member of the Oregon City Club for 26 years, 27 now. And so, you know, I'll go all over the place, but I always go home because that makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. So, Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Joe, can I add something? Yes. He's pretty close to the Tiger Breakfast Rotary Club, and they meet at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to get some slack from that. <laughs> 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 you just right, no, no stealing Lauren away. We're, yeah. we're not going to let him go that easily. <laughs> oh, he'll be back home. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, this is his home. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else back there that you can tell me? Just Janet Peters, would you mind sharing with us, please? Um, sure. I have only been a Rotarian for eight years, but back when Rotary had their very first car show back in, I don't know, 72 or 73. I worked at that car show as a high school student being a volunteer. And at that time I thought, I wanna be a part of that organization someday. But, um, you know, I think for a lot of years, and I don't know how long, but I always thought you had to have a business. So when I started my insurance business in 2012, I joined Rotary in the spring. (laughs) after that. Um, and I, I like the camaraderie. I like the, um, I like the projects that we do. I am a volunteer at heart and I like to support our community and whatever else we've got going on. So. So now is this the Concord, the elegance that you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So whenever year that was, I, I don't know if I was a junior or a senior at high, in high school and I grew up in banks. So yeah. just down the road from here. Um, but we, my um, boyfriend's dad uh, was Bob Schlegel, and he was involved in that. And I remember serving 
pink lemonade and strawberry ice cream or something and it was the stickiest, hottest, yuckiest, but, I, but it was like such a cool thing that they did. I mean, the car show was awesome. So anyway. I mean, that stand power is, is still around. It's yeah. still around. <laughs> It took me a lot of years to get in it to yeah. it. But, hey. <laughs> that is wonderful. No, and at that time there was criteria where you had to own a business and you had to be the the president of the business and mm -hmm. you know, no women. But Rotary has changed and Rotary is continuing to change. And that's one of the things that we talk about a lot. Um, how can we get Rotary to continue to change? How can we increase their impact within the communities? We didn't have a number of people attending our car shows because Rotary is there to serve the communities. It's a volunteer organization, and we really want to continue to make it relevant, keep it relevant. You know, it is offering opportunities to young people, to our uh, exchange students, to uh, older people, to people of uh, different sexes or different uh, uh, sexual persuasions. We are welcoming to all, that's including the diverse candidates also. And I think that's one of the things that we want to continue to do to try to increase and increase our impact in the communities. We want to be, we want to look like the world. And the world is different all over, but it's very inclusive. The other thing that we wanted to do is to collaborate with the, the foundation. The foundation helps us to, to build our relationships. You know, if we raise a few dollars, foundation can get behind it and give us a few more. And then that goes a long ways. And we know by working together, we can all increase our impact on the communities. We can collaborate with other organizations. I see you have a member of the chamber in the meeting today. Uh, we had a young lady yesterday that I was meeting with and they are working with CASA, uh, with the young people to help them to navigate the systems when uh, things go wrong for them. And the value of giving increases when we can join together. And that's why we ask everybody to think about it. You know, giving a dollar or, or $10 a year to help to grow the funds that we need in order to help Rotary get rid of polio or those other diseases to help the hungry and the sick and the mothers with the children that they can't feed and to help to alleviate diseases throughout the world. And that's one way we can do it. We don't necessarily come in to tell you what to do. It's your thoughts and what you feel as you give. And how do you give? You give to get. And if you give continuously, the foundation will help you to get. So I ask that you think about that in your giving. The other area that we are focusing on this year is our brand. And I noticed that uh, your website is just fantastic. I looked at it, I'm going, everybody's name is on the website. Rotor Tiller. I don't think there's another Rotary Club out there that has a website named Rotor, or your newsletter named Rotor Tiller. I don't know who did that, but that was very ingenious. Very ingenious. What we want to do is help, and we've uh, assigned that responsibility a couple of people in the, in the district I immediate past District Governor Diane and uh, Karen Holton, who's our, uh, our AG, Administrative AG, are working together to try to get us on uh, <clears throat> social media and get us our websites up and running so that uh, they can have the entry for all people can come in and see what Rotary is about. So they are working on getting new banners for us, uh, if you, yours is worn, your new signage, then uh, that's a good way for you to get some no, notification. You are Rotary, you are people on the go, and you are functioning in your community. If, you know, I think all of us as business people know that if you don't advertise, if you don't market, you, know, you kind of get out of, out of sight, out of mind. So we want to keep Rotary in the forefront of what's going on in this world. We want to expand our reach. We want people to know that we are out there. We're volunteering. We're servicing the community. And we want to continue to do that. And the last thing we're working on this year 
is to, to work on training our Rotarians, all of our Rotarians, in uh, what Rotary is about. We can now get on the website on uh, Rotary International, and we, we call it REAL, supporting REAL, uh, supporting, continue to support our training for our presidents, our Rotary members, and have them be able to go on and learn something about different areas of Rotary. And now is the time to do it. We're on Zoom. We can go anywhere. We can call up international items. We can look at a country and find out what's going on in that country and how can we maybe join in. And you can listen to all of these items on Zoom or some other uh, go to meeting platform. But what we wanted to do is to have you continue to enjoy Rotary and learn about Rotary. If nothing else, when I leave here this year, I hope that we would have learned something different about Rotary that we did not know when we started this trek. Because all the time that we are spending on this platform, we, gotta get, we have to get something out of it. And so one of the things that I'm urging everyone to do is to look at the, the newsletter when it comes out. There's a link from Rob Sox at White Salmon who talks about some of the different avenues that you can get on and some of the different areas that you can get on and just take a, a few of those uh, uh, tests or those lessons and learn a little bit about it. You can do it in your own time. There's nothing that we are requiring that you do. And so when I look at it for this year, for our thoughts and for what we are planning to do, we want to continue to try to ensure that we continue to try to increase our membership, to try to help to support the foundation and try to train our, our, our leadership and to support uh, all the things that we're doing as far as making sure Rotary is known in the communities. And I'm going to ask one last thing, Julia, about your club. If there's anyone in your club can tell me what your club is known for in the community right now. Mark Nakajima, would you take that question, please? Well, I'm not sure I'm a good person to answer that question, other than I'm sure we're known for the car show. We're probably known for a... Um, a steak feed. Um, we, we had a discussion in the diversity committee and one of, one of our members suggested the, that when she said I'm going to join Rotary it's just a bunch of old white-haired white men and why would you join and I discovered that at that point I fit one of those criteria as far as being male and having white hair but but I am in Rotary. I, I don't know. I am um, I think people know that we do service projects. People know we do things, we contribute to scholarship funds, things like that. Um, but it's, it's difficult. I've been in the club over 20 some odd years. I'm not sure what the community um, sees because I'm in Rotary, I've been in Rotary. So I understand what it is. So it's, it's difficult for me to say how the community views us. And actually that's one of the things we're looking for on our survey for the diversity committee is to see maybe what the community thinks about the local Rotary Club. Thank you, Mark. That is absolutely important too. You know, we're doing all this thing, but what do they think? Do they know it's us? Do we have any advertising? Do we speak to anyone to tell them that this is Rotary and this is what we do? That's how we are going to get known within this community. You guys are very active within the community, but what are we doing it for? For ourselves? Or are we doing it for the people that we're serving? And I think it, it's something for both of us. And as you said, you know, if it's still there that they feel that Rotary is uh, for old white men, then, you know, we surely have a, something that we need to continue to do. And when I hear it, I always go, well, you know, I got the white hair, but that's it. You know? So what we have to do is we have to continue to work on that diversity, equity, and inclusion part. So, but thank you so much. Yeah. 
Who's that, Andrea? Oh, there's Andrea. Yes. Andrea, do you know, has the Rotaract Club been able to have a Zoom meeting yet? I have not uh, met with them. Uh, we have exchanged emails back and forth, but it's very like almost snail mail-ish. It's many days go back and forth. I just reached out again to them earlier this week and I have not heard a response from Sammy or Cheyenne. Okay. All right. Well, keep us posted. Uh, we appreciate your, your efforts and it's kind of difficult times right now, but uh, hopefully if we stick with it, we can see them actually uh, accomplish some things this year. Um, they've, they've done great things in the past and I'm sure that'll, that'll happen again. And Joe, did you have anything else? No, I just wanted to say thank you for the invite and it has been my pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I want to see all those things that you are doing you know, come to the forefront in the sense of Rotary Clubs of Forest Grove. And I remember when I was working in Forest Grove, I didn't see a sign and I asked the young man who was there, it was the, the owner of the McDonald's there, and I said, don't you go to Rotary meetings? He said, no, but I support them. And so I, I wanted to make sure that I asked that question again. That's why I was asking Mark, uh, what are the what, did, what, what, what do he feel that the community thinks about Rotary? And that's something that we all need to share and think about. You know, our club is pretty known for blood drives. And uh, what we service the school, the high school, we do a food pantry and we give backpacks to kids as, uh, that are homeless. And they come in and on Friday afternoon, they pick up a backpack that keep them food for the weekend. They bring the backpack back on. Now I don't think they are doing it because school is closed and we can't accept those bags back. But these are some of the things. We're feeding the hungry. We're helping uh, the hospital with blood drive. So this is like, so we got to be able to build up Rotary. What, what are we doing? Are we doing it just to be doing it because we're a Rotary Club? We want to make a difference and that's how we're going to try to do that. So but thank you for the time. If there are any questions, I will try to answer it. Thank you so much, Joe. Does anyone have a, oh, oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Saw clapping, I thought it was a hand raise. <laughs> thank you. Um, 